To read the mind of anyone, you need to know three techniques. These techniques are crucial to master. By mastering these methods, you can effortlessly discern and grasp what anyone is pondering. So let me tell you a Buddhist tale that will teach you how to read the mind of others in a small village. A long time ago, two brothers lived. The older brother was blind, so he spent most of his time at home, while the younger brother worked as a farmer. However, their farm was constantly being destroyed by the many animals in the fields. The younger brother was troubled by this problem, but he eventually came up with a solution. He thought, why not ask my blind brother for help to scare away the animals in the fields? He can sit in the field and shout if he hears any animal sounds, and this way our crops will be saved after thinking about it. The younger brother built a small hut in the field and placed the elder brother inside it. He explained to him, Brother, if you hear any animal sounds, just shout and the animals will run away. This will save our crops. The elder brother agreed to his younger brother's idea and began sitting in the field. Whenever he heard the sound of animals, he shouted and scared them away. They continued this practice for many days. One time there was a field where a deer ran through and broke the fence before running away. Shortly after, a king who was pursuing the deer also came to the field. The king noticed the blind brother and asked him, Have you seen a deer here? The blind brother replied, Your majesty, I am blind. How can I see a deer? However, I can tell you that the animal that left my field is not worth chasing. You are wasting your time. The king was astonished by the blind brother's words and questioned how he knew this. The king asked the blind brother if he was lying as he claimed to be blind, but spoke about the worthiness of the deer. In response, the blind brother stated, you, your majesty, the animal you believe to be a deer is actually a pregnant doe. I have never heard of a king hunting a pregnant doe. So I telling you that she is not worth your pursuit. You should not waste your time chasing after her. The king was left astonished upon hearing this. He was unable to comprehend how the blind person could identify the doe as pregnant he pondered, how can a blind person know this? How can he be sure whether the deer I am chasing is pregnant or not? How, how can he confidently inform me of this information despite being blind? The king felt the need to verify this and thus instructed his commander. Commander, I want that animal alive. I need to confirm whether it is indeed a pregnant. Do the blind man seems to be very sure about this and I need to investigate. Please go and find out if she is pregnant. The king's orders were received by the commander who proceeded when he came back. He told the king that the blind brother was correct and that the doe was pregnant. The king was filled with wonder and couldn't figure out how the blind person had known about the doe's pregnancy. The king had many questions in his mind and decided to ask the blind man to get to the bottom of this look. I may not know whether you are truly blind or not, but I have come to ask you one thing. Will you give me the correct answer to my question? In response, the blind brother said, Your Majesty, you can ask me anything you want, and I will answer you truthfully. The king said, You are a wise man, and you seem to have a keen understanding of many things today. I have called you to find out whether my wife is faithful to me or not. The blind brother responded, Your Majesty, what kind of question is this? Your marriage has lasted for many years, and now you want to know such things. Why are these questions arising in your mind? However, the king insisted, saying, you must answer this question. If you do not provide me with an answer, I will punish you, you with the death penalty, hearing the king's threat. The blind brother said, Your Majesty, if you want the answer to this question, you will have to do me a favor. The king asked, Tell me what do I need to do? The blind brother responded for that. You will have to leave your wife alone with me in a room. The king was initially angry upon hearing it. But he eventually agreed to the request and ordered his commander to leave the blind brother and the queen alone in a room at that moment. Moment the blind brother expressed his desire to touch the queen upon hearing this, the queen became furious and started beating the blind brother with her hands, feet, and all her might. Afterwards, the blind man somehow managed to escape and went to the king. Then the blind brother told the king, Your Majesty, your wife is unfaithful. The king enraged, drew his sword, and went to the queen. Then the king asked a question, warning her that any falsehood would lead to her execution, Yushin. He asked if she was faithful or not, to which the queen replied, Your majesty, you may as well kill me, but I am not faithful, 
The king is overjoyed because everything the blind brother has said is true. Upon hearing this, the king immediately went to the blind brother and asked, How did you know that my wife is not faithful? The blind man replied, Your majesty is quite simple. I told your wife that I wanted to touch her and she became so enraged that she started beating me. When I told her that I wanted to touch her, she could have refused, but instead she began to beat me, and in the process she touched my entire body. Now you tell me, he continued, how can such a woman be faithful? The king said, you are quite wise. All right then, let's proceed. He added, answer one more question. Correctly, and I will let you go from here. The king then asked, tell me, am I truly my father, father, son, or someone else's to this? The blind brother responded, your majesty, why do you bother with this question? No matter who your parents are, you are the king of this state. So let this question go. But the king insisted, no, no, I want the exact answer to this question. Otherwise, this question will always bother me, so I want to know the truth. The blind brother responded, Your Majesty, I can tell you right now whose child you are, but before that, I want you to promise that you won't get angry with me. The king said, I promise I won't get angry with you. Then the blind brother said to the king, You are indeed your father's son, but you are also under the shadow of a miserly merchant. Upon hearing this, the king rushed to his mother. He asked her mother, Please tell me the truth, am I truly my father's son? Or someone else's? If you don't tell me the truth, I will give up my life. Right here to this, the king's mother said, said son, You are indeed your father's child, but you are also under the shadow of a miserly merchant. Upon hearing this, the king is delighted and immediately returns to the blind brother. He asked, how did you know that the shadow of a miserly merchant was on me? The blind man replied, Your Majesty, you asked me many questions and I gave you the correct answers to all of them. If you were any other king, I would have received many rewards by now. But you haven't given me a single penny so far. It was from this that I estimated that you are very stingy. The king bursts into laughter and says, Whatever you ask for, I will give it to you. But tell me, how do you know what is right and what is wrong? How can you provide such accurate and precise answers? To this the blind brother said, Your Majesty, I am blind by nature. If I had ease, I could easily understand anyone's thoughts. The mind has its language, and, and this language can be seen in the actions of a person's body by observing a person's eyes, lips, the way they work, and their activities, one can understand what is going on in their mind. Based on this, we can know the thoughts of anyone, but I am blind so I perceive through actions. If I want to know something, I have to assign a task to the next person to see how that person works and how he does the task. And based on that, I can understand what is going on in his mind. Fee the king asked, so does that mean? I can also know someone's thoughts to this, the blind brother said, certainly. You too can understand anyone's thoughts, but before that you need to work on yourself. And that work is to calm your mind and bring your mind into the present for that today. I'm going to tell you three ways, and these three ways are very easy and simple, but your majesty, before that, you have to do one thing. Focus your mind. When we focus our mind and merge our mind into the present, we can understand the thoughts of others because that person is thinking in the present, and we also have to bring our minds into the present only. Then can we understand their thoughts if we are thinking about past events? How will we know what the next person is thinking in the present? because we are immersed in past events to know anyone's thoughts first and foremost. We need to focus our minds and bring them into the present. After that, the blind brother told the king, your pray to yes, your majesty. I will tell you the three ways by which you can easily understand anyone's thoughts. Then the blind man says to the king, O king, the first method is to pay attention to the eyes, the most important thing. When we talk to someone is to look them in the eyes because eyes don't speak but they say a lot. If we learn to understand the signals in a person's eyes, we can know what is going on in their mind, what they are thinking, and what they are about to do. I don't have eyes myself but I learned this skill from the revered Gudam Buddha many years. Ago he was my teacher and guide. I used to have eyes back then and I could understand people's thoughts solely through their eyes. So if you also want to know the thoughts of others, you should focus on their eyes, such as their gaze, where they are looking, and in what direction. If their eyes are wandering here and there when you're talking to them, it means they are searching for a way to escape from the conversation, 
and someone might be lying. If the person is avoiding in direct eye contact, it means they're afraid that their lie might be exposed and people will learn the truth. But if their eyes look at you without moving, they are probably honest and interested. They want to talk to you and share their thoughts. Also see how their eyebrows move. If their eyebrows go down while they look away, they might be thinking hard or worried about something else. If their eyebrows go up and their eyes get big, they might be surprised or curious about what you say. Also, see how big or small their pupils are. The pupils are the black part of the eye. If the pupils get bigger, it means they like you or what you say. They are excited or happy. If the pupils get smaller, it means they don't like you or what you say. They are uncomfortable or angry. Also see how red or white their eyes are. The white part of the eye is called the scara. If the scara is red, it means they are tired, stressed, or sick. They might not want to talk to you. I remember a time when I met a tired person who was traveling when we talked. His eyes looked around a lot, never looking at me. This showed that he was worried and wanted to go away fast. I thought he might be hiding something. He did not want to talk to me. Then I asked him more questions. I found out he had a secret plan similarly. Other facial expressions can help us easily understand a person's thoughts. Sometimes a person exhibits different behaviors through their face. If you pay attention to a person's facial expressions, you can easily understand if the person is disappointed, very sad or extremely happy. You can also figure out what they are feeling inside. And all these things can be determined through their facial expressions, your majesty. The face is like a picture that shows what people are feeling inside. Even if they don't say anything, if you want to understand people better, you have to pay attention to these silent signs when you see someone whose mouth turns down at the sides. Making a small sad face it usually means they are unhappy, not pleased, or have lost something you can also tell by their eyes and their body. If they are feeling low, on the other hand, a big and real smile, one that makes the eyes and the cheeks go up is a sign of happiness, friendliness, and kindness. The eyes are very important in this when they get small and shiny. You can be sure that the smile is real. Look at the space between a person's eyebrows where the skin wrinkles when it gets deeper and tighter. It often means they are kind of confused at thinking hard or trying to understand something difficult or new. The way the mouth is can tell you, a lot of mouth that is closed and squeezed may mean they don't agree, don't like something or don't want to talk. But a mouth that is open and relaxed means they are open, comfortable and ready to talk. As you get better at seeing and understanding these signs on the face, you'll be able to know what people are thinking and feeling inside, whether they say their feelings out loud or keep quiet. Their faces will show you what's in their heart, whether a person speaks with their words or not. You can understand everything from their face, your majesty. I will tell you a story one time. I met a sad person who came to me for help, but they acted like they didn't care. But I saw a small line on their forehead. It showed they had a problem. I asked them to tell me their problem. And they did. They felt better after that. And I helped them. A real smile makes the eyes happy too. It means they are glad and kind. A frown makes the eyebrows go down. It means they are worried or confused. The eyebrows go up when they are surprised or curious. You can tell how they feel by looking at their face. Continuing, the blind brother told the king about the third method, saying, Your Majesty, there is a third language too, which is the language of gestures and body language to understand a person's thoughts. We need to understand hand gestures and body language when a person speaks. You may have noticed that they keep moving their hands and making gestures in addition to words. Their body language plays a significant role in conveying what a person is thinking. Your Majesty, the body and the hands can say a lot of things without words. It is like a secret way of talking where you can see what people want and feel by the small things they do think about when someone taps and their fingers fast while they are talking to you when fingers make a quick sound on something. It may mean they are bored in a hurry or want to end the talk soon. I remember a time when I met a person who wanted to sell me something and he did this sign. I knew he was nervous, so I made him give me a better price. And he was surprised also when someone crosses their arms, they might not like you or what you say. They are hiding their thoughts from you. This way of holding their arms is like a wall keeping their thoughts and feelings safe from others by seeing this sign. You can be nice and careful when you talk to them. 
and make them feel more comfortable and open. When someone leans forward, they might be interested in you or what you say, they are listening to you carefully. This means they are interested and want to hear more. This way of moving their body shows they want to listen, learn and understand what you are saying. I once met a smart teacher who did this. He was very calm, but he leaned in with, with interest, showing he wanted to know more about the topic. Sometimes people who touch their faces a lot when they talk to you can help you know what they are thinking. It often means they are worried, thinking hard or having a big idea. These small touches show you what is going on in their mind and heart to be good at understanding others by their body and hands. You have to be patient. Watch carefully and appreciate the things they don't say. These small but important signs like a quiet book show you the feelings and thoughts that are hidden inside them and let you connect with them better. If we pay attention to these three methods and understand them correctly, we can quickly know what's going on in a person's mind, how much attention they are giving to our words and what's happening in their mind. However, before that, you have to focus your mind and bring it into the present. Only then can you pay attention to all these actions, understand them, and realize what's going on in the person's mind. Otherwise, if you are preoccupied with past events or plans, you will never pay attention to the person's body language, and you will never understand what's happening in their mind, what they are thinking. You may have seen many great saints and enlightened beings who look at you with great calm and can tell you what's going on in your mind and what you have come to learn from them. The biggest reason for this is that they can read you and understand you because their mind is focused and peaceful. And that's why they can easily understand your thoughts as we come to the end of this Zen journey. Inspa Zen team would like to express our deepest gratitude for your incredible support on this journey in pen, because knowledge has the power to elevate your life.